bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tris and this is Double O'Neill. Before I go into anything, let's have a little look at what we're up to this episode. The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Now it's interesting. So you got the 3D printed cave entrance, which is cool. It's been in my mind a little bit of how am I going to do my little portals for the engines going into. So I want to talk about that a bit more very, very soon. We have my birthday present, which was really, really good fun. Um, opening up and enjoying because that was recently. There's also lovely rocks going all over the place. I have some new additions to the layout um, as well. Not the layout, but like rolling stock as well as the rock formation, which was really cool. And yeah, really, really chuffed the bits of how that's worked out. So let's start going into those points, well points, but the parts of the layout. So let's talk about the 3D printer. So I got the Ender 3 V2. I talked about it on the last episode. I built it up and you would have seen that there. I've since learned about some of the bits that you need to do to kind of improve it. I had the Ender 3, which I borrowed off a friend and upgraded. But what I found was that there was an issue with the uh, firmware or yeah, the, the software, the firmware that's on there and you need to do an update, which is actually really, really easy, which is off the website uh, that Creality uh, provide the downloads of the, the updates and everything that's there. And basically the issue I was having was I was starting to print and you can tune it as you go. You can adjust um, how quickly it prints and temperatures and things like that. And if you did that, it kind of started going off into the corner, doing its own thing, ignoring what you wanted to do making all sorts of weird glitchy noises so anyway with the update that did fix it uh, i had a, uh, a comment on the group uh, you know on the on the video so not on the group um and it's you know suggested some upgrades as well for it so i've actually ordered some of them kind of stronger springs that go under the bed uh, a dual gear extruder and i will be getting some other things for it but i haven't had to spend a lot of money so anyway i've had lots of fun making parts on that printer and one of them was the cave entrance and the cave entrance, the reason I've printed it, because I couldn't find what I wanted as an you know individual piece. And I thought, why don't I just draw it? Because I was thinking for going into tunnels, and everything like that, I could just print the, the entrances and everything. Because I have a number that are going to be on the layout once I, well, by the time I finished it, there will be a lot. So if I start getting used to printing those, it'd be good. So yeah, it was a really good process. So we'll... We'll talk about that. So it's just literally made from PLA, which is um, like corn starch. It's this kind of, I think, biodegradable plastic. Um, and it prints very, very easily. And yeah, printed that out after drawing it out. It didn't take too much, um, you know, time to, to print it. I think it was a couple of hours. But the main feature was that I had like stones around to create the, the front of the arch. And on the inside, I've got corrugated steel as a look for that. And then I put some little ears on the side so then we could screw it down, which is kind of cool. So with that kind of then screwed in place, I went down the step of obviously doing all the rocks around it. But I'll go into that in a minute. We'll go down into the uh, kitchen where I did the work and we can have a little watch of that. The next bit really, really exciting for me was using my new birthday present. And I knew what I was getting because I asked for it. My dad said, what would you like? And I've always had an eye for this engine. But what we do is we'll start unwrapping it and I can talk to you about it. And we can just enjoy, um, you know, see some running of it. So I'll pop up into the loft after that and we can have some fun. So I must say thank you mum and dad for this. Uh, normally my dad watches and sometimes my mum uh, checks in as well. So uh, it's exactly what I wanted and uh, <laughs> it's actually the one I, I picked out. So it's very, very nice of you to, to do that. So this is a class 33 in BR Blue. 
its uh, number is 33, uh, so obviously class A3, and then 110, and then it's got the yellow um, DCE stripes on it. And yeah, it's a gorgeous, um, beautiful uh, loco. What I like over the 25 to this, you see on the front, it's got a rounded um, nose compared to the 25, which is much flatter. I remember seeing one of these as a model show, and I said to my brother, what is that? And he said, it's of class 33. And ever since then, I've always thought I'd like to get one of them. And uh, yeah, I just, I like it. They're, they're short, um, but they're powerful. So looking at it, really impressed at all the details are crazy good. Because I've got a Hornby and a Lima um, as my older um, engines from many, many years ago. And like look at this, all the mesh, the way things are built up. It's so delicate and um, it, just so much detail included. Just so impressed with it. Uh, looking at even just the bogeys, both sets are powered and it feels reasonably heavy so i'll have to measure that in a second but so impressed and just looking at the front you can see all these extra details on there the handrails and i feel like i'm going to break it if i touch too much um one thing i notice is the little um coupling which i guess is very similar to the real one or really similar to the real one just catches the the bogeys as they move um but we'll see if that causes us a problem but looking at the bottom you can see through and see that there's a lot going on with this. this is by Helian or Heljan as some people say but I understand it said Helian um, so yeah so let's get on the scales to see what it weighs it's 446 yeah 446 that's heavy um, compared to all my others but we give it a run it seems to move nicely oh. There we go. It makes a, um, I find one way versus the other makes a different noise, but I will run it in and I'll let you know how I'm getting on. But no, running it nice and nice and slowly, see how it's working. Um, it's good on this uh, table, I'll just turn this, because the um, at an angle, you'll see that as you go slightly downhill, well, you can't quite see it, the table isn't completely flat but you can give it a tiny, tiny bit of power and just see how slowly can we get it to go. And that's a lovely little crawl that it's doing there. It's just going up a slope there so it slows down and stops. Give it a nudge and off it goes again. So I'll just put it on more of a level surface now. This bit's more, you see, it's just starting to move again. It's flatter. Um, it's not like contacts played up or anything. So really, really pleased with that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go backwards and forwards a few more times and um, the, the biggest thing for me is that when you first get them going and, and you look at how well they run like this is running so slowly just impresses me so much and obviously it's my birthday present so I'm enjoying it even more so anyway what we'll do is we'll head up into the loft uh, and I've already been doing some laps and I'm going to talk to you all about it anyway so I'll see you upstairs so here we are up in the loft and I've already done uh, like half hour each direction, a little bit less actually because it sounded like it was running quite nicely so I thought I've, I've done enough. One thing I noticed when it was going around the corners, there's little bits that are dangling down that are all part of the design I guess we could put it and so I've had to manipulate some of the little drop cables or whatever they are. I don't know all the exact bits of what they are exactly but right here it kind of go tink as it goes around a corner onto a straight but what we do is I'll show you what I found with it um, really pleased with it it uh, runs very very well and uh, let me show you So you can see it does a really, really slow crawl. A bit like on my last video, I talked about the Lord Nelson. So we'll go as slow as we can on this one. Yeah, really, really, really slowly um, moving along. And I don't know, I find that more and more impressive the more I've been enjoying this hobby. And uh, the newer models <laughs> do it a lot better than the older ones, but that could be mechanisms. Maybe I need to clean my old ones a bit more, but I'm just chuffed to bits of this. Um, I love the 33. It's uh, my favourite looking loco. Slick the other way. 
I find when it swaps direction it makes a little clicking noise inside the mechanism like like a t -t -t -t. you won't be able to hear it yourself but then it goes away but I'm happy with it when I went round earlier and got it all warm it was absolutely fine as you can see it goes very nicely slowly around so let's give it a little run round and you can watch it go Looks nice. There it is. What we'll do is we'll give it something to pull, and I reckon we could try something nice and heavy. So a fine crawl. You can pull all of these very, very happily. I keep the freight stuck. Um, well, not stuck, let's call it. But I keep the freight on the line that is going to be behind the hill. And so then I can have it whenever I want. As you can see, there's quite a few on there. What I do is I speed it up once it's got going. And we can have some fun with it. There we have the toad. And off we go. It's not struggling at all. Sitting it's got 440 grams or whatever I measured it as. It's uh, got a lot of traction. A lot of power. Got my uh, Hornby Class 25, the oldie. You can see them actually, a size comparison. Very similar in size, in fact. That's beautiful, okay. Looking very, very nice as it goes around. Very impressed with it. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoors, forever free.
enjoyed that. I did, and I can't wait to do many more laps uh, with the engine. Obviously, I'll be doing some shunting in bits and bobs once I've made the layout a bit more uh, comprehensive. It's very loopy at the moment, but I'll get that fixed. Uh, like we've talked about before, you don't need to just, you know, rush to have the perfect layout straight away. You can just do it at your own pace, and that's what I'm doing. Just enjoying it, thinking about changing things here and there, and yeah, just finding uh, time to to go up into the loft and enjoy it is you know rarer and rarer now we're all coming out of lockdown um, but when I do get up there I kind of I just feel good it's really really good to be up there so now let's take a look at the 009 layout um, it was really good fun to do it obviously it's not finished there's a lot of work to do but I got to the point of what would then need to be um, some painting to happen and I will get to that point but that'll probably be on the next video but I'm gonna now go down to the kitchen you're gonna see me from a bunch of days ago um, you'll see <laughs> different t-shirts popping on and stuff like that but anyway see you down there let's take a look at the tunnel it's just an entrance and I put four little holes in it so then obviously we can uh, screw it down 3D printed it on my new Ender 3 V2 printer. The printer's been pretty good, but the biggest thing that I found with it is I had to update the firmware because uh, it uh, had a few glitches when you wanted to adjust something whilst it's, uh, you know, working away. And uh, when you want to change the speed or something, it starts jumping around all funny. So if you do end up getting one, make sure you update the firmware on there. Uh, so the print came out all right, uh, but I know I want to do some upgrades. I got a nice comment from uh, one of my subscribers, I think they're a subscriber, anyway, and they kind of offered me some suggestions of what I should get. Um, the bits I want to get for it is a uh, like better extruder, maybe my next thing, so I've actually ordered one of them, some better leveling springs that go under the bed. Looking back at this, you'll see that I've done a layer of black primer on it, um, and all it means is that later, once we've built up the cave, or whatever we're gonna call it, hilltop cave, you know, to go collect our diamonds, um, then I can paint it afterwards. But if I paint it now, I'm only gonna ruin it with adding all the other bits with it. So yes, what we do is we'll screw this in and uh, we'll have some fun with that. One thing I had to make sure is that the engines go in, but the engine's not really gonna go in. We're gonna have a little diesel that goes in. So we've got plenty of room. That's how I designed it. So then it obviously got our little loco in. So we just screw this in place and we'll go from there. I could use the hot glue gun, but I just thought, well, I put some screws on there to keep it firm. Yeah, if I over, over tighten it, I think it would damage it. But yes, I could probably pick the whole board up for using this, but <laughs> we won't do that. But that's near enough for me, and it'll be fine, and we can have our mountain top building up around that. And it's only going to be simple, so my plan was to have it wrapping around here a little bit. Um, and then, not really sure what I'm going to do with the back yet. Um, I don't know if it needs to be all shrubbery and trees or what, but I can get to that. I don't have to work that out now. So, I need to get my bits of cardboard, um, build up a kind of something that's towards this kind of height above it. With my hand here, it looks quite high, but it's really not. Um, and then come down here and then that can be my rock um, stuff uh, for when I put the um, plaster wrap on it, got the one pound bandage. So what I do is I'll crack one and do that. You can have a little watch for a moment and uh, we'll see how it comes up. I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna look, but it's gonna look like something. So we'll go with that. Anyway, let's crack on. What I'm gonna use to stick the cardboard down, normally you would see that I use um, normal size of wood glue and wait some time for it to dry. Purchased myself, purchased, <laughs> bought myself a, um, a glue gun. What we do is we'll angle me up, you can actually see me a bit more. Obviously, you don't need to see me too much, but we've got this hot glue gun here, and I haven't opened it up yet. I'm just going to get it out and we'll find out how good it is. This is a Loctite one. I thought I'd get a slightly better one. Um, a child from Chadwick had one. Um, which was by, a, I can't remember what brand, but I'm sure the, they're all around the same. I've seen a number of different ones, and this wasn't too expensive. I think it was some Hobbycraft, about £18, I think. I thought it should do the job. 
I've got some glue sticks that come with it. So we'll just see how this works out and uh, assemble the little parts onto it, but it should be good. Anyway, let's see how that looks. I've got my bits of cardboard and, um, okay, oh, there we go. Anyway, let's crack on. Yeah, it's warming up on the end. I touched the plastic bit, don't worry. Um, so that's gonna go kind of here. And I wanna have some more like cliff faces because I've got some of the plaster rock bits. I'm gonna bring you up a bit more. I feel weird. So, yeah, so we'll just cut out random pieces. We'll work out how it's gonna go. I kind of want it to come up to a top. So what I might do is, not really sure how I wanna do this. So we'll have one like that. So then we've got a sheer face, but that can be coming out a little bit with the plaster rock that I'm going to put on. Because you could cut in a little bit if you really want to. But I don't know. I'm going to make it up as you go along with all this stuff. Okay. Let's see how the uh, blue gun's going. Yep. We're getting some. Okay, right. That's on there. <laughs> it's falling over. A bit easier than using PVA glue, isn't it? This time I'll put a bead. Let's get another one of these out. plaster cloth over all this I'll work out roughly where I'm gonna be and I've got these rock molds um, by Wooden Scenics I bought them quite expensive like £9.75 but obviously someone's had to make it market it and sell it but I always feel like that's more of like a £5 product but if you use it like a million times I guess it becomes really worth the money so maybe I buy another mold sometimes but my plan is to make a load of these up and try and build them up a bit once uh, the plaster cloth's on there um, and go from there but just got some hobby graph plaster to go with it which would be fine um, and then I've got my roll of um, plaster cloth like I said I'm going to run around here I kind of don't really have a massive plan it's more of a case of put some bits on put the plaster cloth on put the other bits on if it looks good I'll keep it if it looks bad then I can just rip all this up again and have another go right to a bit closer on this now you can see what I've done. We've got my cave entrance. We've got a kind of baseline structure. Got my ends on it, or like the capped off bits here. I can still, if you see my fingers coming through there, I can still access there if I need to. If I decide to do anything more with this, I can. So now let's look at the plaster cloth. This is by Hobbycraft. It's a pound. Um, absolute bargain. You get three meters by 10 centimeters. And I'll put a couple of, well, I'll put it on and maybe double, double up on layers. Um, but I've got a little tray of water here. So if we just zoom back here, um, my tray of water is here. Just a Chinese food tray. Put that over here carefully. I'm going to try not to drip on the track. Should be good. What I'll do is to protect the rest of the track. Because nothing worse than getting plaster all over the track. You've got to redo everything. So, I'll just cover up here. Oh, almost there. Just poke that in there. That can sit there whilst we're doing all this. I could actually glue gun the back of it down. Stick that down. That'll be fine. 
So what I'm going to do is cut these to the kind of a bunch of lengths and then I can just lay them all over the top and it will be absolutely fine. Beware when you open them, they're a bit dusty so just be careful. Roll this out nicely. <laughs> well not roll this out but get it out nicely because you will get this plaster absolutely everywhere. Just be delicate with it. Okay. The fun bit begins. Things are going to get very white. You could wear gloves if you wanted, I guess, to kind of make them less white. All I do with Hobbycraft stuff, literally in for a moment, doesn't take much at all. I always make sure the excess drips off and I'll come round and I'll drape it over and I make sure make these bits join up when you rub it with your fingers it kind of joins up all the little holes but normally the second layer will be good for that so off we come and I'm just trying to bring this around the front it's hard to see for you actually because I've got my little pot there that I'm using to help me but it's like snap, crackle and pop when it's uh, working away quite nicely. We'll just attempt to do a layer first before we try and fill out any edges we miss because we can always use poly filler for some bits that aren't looking the most beautifully, beautifully, beautiful, I don't know. Okay, so we tuck that in there, it's looking all right. I feel like everyone's doing plaster work and rock work at the moment, watching a lot of the other videos. Um, it just makes me want to do it more, because <laughs> I've got so much that I need to do. Um, and I watch everyone else having a go, and I'm like, oh, I need to do mine at some point, but you just never get around to it. So what I want to do is kind of seal off this border, uh, run it around the layouts. So we've got um, just found the edge here and across, uh, we can seal it off. And actually at the front of the layout, now I want to leave that open and that'd be where the kind of mini access row comes in on one side, as well as a little path that goes off into the, the mountain town. So this is really at the end of the, the town and they jump on here and, and off they go. Hopefully that will make sense and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things you can uh, make an imaginary story for yourself so then you can work out what's going where. So basically I've just cut out some of these pieces, they'll continue on, I'll glue getting them on in place and I'll just run them down to a certain point. And then on the other end, if I just turn this, you'll see the entrance, the original entrance that came in here from the mountain. And I'm gonna do the, all this part once I'm up. Uh, in the loft and I've done all this I can get it up there and then I can match the other side of the mountain so they look the same when it's all sitting there so it looks nice so I'll crack on I'll start sticking this all together and we'll go from there
So I've made lots and lots of these pieces. As you've seen, we starting to make her play with different pigments and mixtures and tried to follow the instructions and failed a little bit. But what I do is I'll turn on the hot glue gun and I'll just start sticking them in. And then once I've done that, I will use some polyfiller. As you can see, I've added the rock on the sides here. So there's all the little gaps and everything, and I don't know how this is going to work out, because <laughs> you know when you have something in your head and then you start doing it and it's not going how you want? It's currently like that. So it will get painted one colour eventually. I'm going to mix up some... So all these little... Sorry. <laughs> all these little hairs that you get from the glue gun. Yeah, it's uh, like cobwebs. You can't see them, but they're here um so they're annoying me um yeah so stuck all the rocks in different places and i don't know i'm kind of happy with how it's kind of worked out but i'll get the plaster now or the polyfiller as such and start just poking all the edges and everything to try and make it look like a cave entrance um, at the moment it looks like lots of different things is wedged on doesn't it uh, but obviously coming around here um you can see uh, at the bottom I've got my bigger gaps and I'm just thinking I'll have like static grass and things growing here um, it should look quite good I've got a, a loose bit then I'll have to stick that on um, saw that pumping glue on uh, no the glue guns worked out alright this one's a Loctite one as I talked about before and seems to be quite good I've used quite a few sticks doing this actually I think I'm on my third or fourth stick but no, I'm, I'm pleased with, with it so far. So let's get some polyfiller in place and see how it goes. It's been a day. I'm really happy with how it's looking, to be honest. When I first started sticking on all the plaster moulds, so see this is what I used to create the moulds, as you've seen. Made lots of them. I've gone and stuck them on. It's been great. You've seen all that. But before I had finished, 
Um, I was sticking them on and I really wasn't sure how it's going to look. But then with the mixing up of the poly filler um, and then splodging it into the places, you know, in the gaps and everything and just creating my own little textures, kind of ended up feeling reasonably happy about it. But I've been looking at it for a little while. It's been sitting here looking quite smart and I'm looking forward to the next stage now, which will be the painting. But that won't be for now, that will be for the next video. I'm going to be adding some grass as well and yeah. The tunnel entrance has worked out kind of how I wanted it to. I need to do a bit of cleaning up on it, I kind of filled in some of the, uh, the the gaps between the bricks that went round or the stones or whatever they would be. Um, so I just need to kind of pick that all out again. But I think once I've done all of the other bits and then kind of painted things and made them look slightly weathered, it's gonna look nice. Like on the top here, I can have some grass, I can have even small things growing out the top, you know, like small shrubs or trees or whatever. Um, and the same as back here, I can have certain things growing at least, which will be really, really good. And yeah, I can start making the whole layout come together. I've been doing some work on the turntable, but I'm not going to show that now. I'll be for some future episodes because I've still got a lot of work to do on it. But really happy with the design that I'm kind of putting together to do it. It's kind of fun, so you take your time and you get to it when you get to it. But anyway, back to me into my uh, room where I'm chatting to you. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you more on this. To go with the diesels running around, I had a comment on, I think again, the last video or maybe the one before, and someone suggested getting some of the six wheeler um, Lima milk vans. So I got some of them, uh, St. Ival, I don't know, I think that's the name of it, but they're pretty little things and I got three of them. Yeah, they kind of all came on eBay. I can't remember how much I paid for them, but not a great amount. And uh, I wanted to have them running behind the class 25. I should have a shot of it running around now. Um, but I want to introduce to my rolling stop some of the more modern um, stock. Because at the moment I've got my Great Western stuff, which is cool and everything. If it was a heritage railway, the diesels are helping out. But it's nice to have a few more of the modern uh, items going on there. One of the things I wanted to talk about was from... Modeler's Mecca, I got some of their storage boxes and they do a pack, I think, for £22 for three of these boxes. And you're probably thinking, that's a lot of money for three boxes. And, and you think it would be, but when you open it up, you get a lot in there and you get a lot of laser cut um, cardboard and it takes a little bit of building actually. Initially, I was like, how does this go together? And then I kind of had a mess around, looked at some pictures off the website and realized how good it was. I first saw these on New Junction's uh, video, he kind of mentioned them. But the nice boxes, you can write down what's on the front of them. As you saw on some of my previous videos, I had some wooden ones, which I'd built up. And uh, obviously I've got them off eBay, I shared the link before. Um, but this is basically it, we open it up. And then we can put our items in, lift this out. And then we've got the one underneath. So it's kind of well kept. So then I can put these in here. I have coupled them together now, so I can't get them. All right. So then they'll drop in there. You can put the division in. Oh, it's hitting me. So then you can put one in there. Oh, uh, one in there. And one in here. Yeah. So then we can keep them nice. We can pop that in there. I can go back up into the loft and keep all of my lovely locos and rolling stock nice and safe. Pop the lid on, and here we go. But yeah, that's Modeler's Mecca. Check out the website and just type in box on the search and you'll find them straight away. But that's that, they're gonna be kept really, really nicely. Um, and yeah, I've got three of them and I didn't get off their website. I got off eBay, I actually paid more because I didn't realize <laughs> I should have just gone on the website. But no, really, really pleased with that. I really, really enjoyed just kind of coming on here and to see you this week. I've been busy and work always gets in the way it feels like sometimes i enjoy my work um it's it's very very enjoyable because i look after rc cars and people that enjoy them and we go racing but when i do have a moment i'm thinking about my model railways and just about things i can do to do a bit of painting do a bit of clay work um not clay work but plaster work again it's my bit of rock this is a bit left over i couldn't squeeze it on i was trying to find somewhere to put it but i'm going to do more of that and i might buy some more molds initially i thought because there are nine ten pounds the the molding packs but to be honest you get so many of these out of it if you want you can just keep pouring 
let it dry, pop them out, keep pouring, let it dry, pop it out. So I think there'll be some other areas on the layout that will be enjoying these. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for, for subscribing and leaving me great comments. It's so appreciated. And a big thank you to my patrons. Um, you know who you are. There'll be a nice list of you popping up here. I've had a few more recently, which is very nice, very flattering uh, that you want to help out. And yeah, so I will see you hopefully in a couple of weeks. I don't know exactly when I've got a busy work schedule coming up, taking up my weekends and in, in even week time into the evening. So I don't know what I'll be able to do, but I will see you when I can. And I'm looking forward to giving you some of the ideas that I've been thinking of. And I'm looking forward to painting the W9 layout and showing you all the rocks done and all the bits and bobs out there. Anyway, take care, look after yourselves, stay safe as always, and I'll see you next time. Bye.